Thrones. And, uh, it was a lot of, you know, the whole thing with putting the power of, of life and death in someone's thumbs. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today we're going to be making sense of life through Gladiator. The general who became a slave. The slave who became a gladiator. A gladiator who defied an emperor. That's a, that's the a synopsis. If you need a synopsis, if you haven't seen the movie, that's a, that's the synopsis yeah. of the movie. Maybe I'm gonna look at the movie through the cardinal sins. Okay. Lust. There is some lust, <laughs> particularly perhaps by. Uh, Marcus Aurelius's daughter for Maximus, who had a fling with him before they, he went got to, married. they both, yeah, before yeah. they both got married to other people and had kids and such. And Commodus to her sister, to yeah. the son and the daughter of Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, to his sister. Which, you know, happens, I suppose. It's uncomfortable. In... <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. it's kind of something that uh, humans, it helps when you. To have that familiarity and comfort and similar reference points to have that attraction with people, right? And Commodus, uh, he's the son of the emperor, then becomes the emperor. It's not too many other women, I think, that kind of are in a similar position to him that are, he knows of. You yeah. Know? So, sees his sister, she gets it, she's in a similar position. And, and then on top of the fact that he has issues, him just feeling like it's okay to have Mountains romantic issues. feelings for the sister because yes. otherwise and it would make any sense, no. regardless of the fact that they have similarities. Yes. And yeah. I think that leads into the other one, envy. Envy, I think, is the main driver of that Commodus is envy for Maximus. Maximus getting all the love and attention from his father and the love and attention from his sister. So he kind of wants both. First, he tries to get the attention and the love still desperately from his father. And then after he, spoiler alert, but at this point, come on, murders Marcus Aurelius. I think there is envy there, but I think primarily what it is, is um, resentment and anger. Mm. Because uh, towards Marcus Aurelius, right. towards uh, your dad mm. loving someone else more than you, mm -hmm. because really... Marcus Aurelius has this father-son relationship with Maximus. It's really obvious to everyone. And also has, as he approaches death, he's asking Maximus to basically to take charge of his dreams to turn Rome into a republic of the people governed by senators mm. and not Commodus. Mm -hmm. And so that is obviously the ultimate nail in the coffin. And I think that Commodus actually is aware of this. He's kind of, of course he, he is aware of this because before he kills Marcus Aurelius, the dad actually tells him that, that that's mm. what's gonna happen. Yeah. And so then he kills him. And so that was a nail in the coffin for years of feeling unseen by his dad and years of feeling unloved mm -hmm. by his dad. That's the thing that he longs for mm -hmm. the most. Yeah. And he never gets that validation. He gets, yeah. he arrives at the, battle just before the last battle before the dad dies mm. and he arrives there late and he's just it's just another thing where the dad kind of like shows that he's disappointed in oh man you know this is why is this my son you know <laughs> and um and it's very obvious this is in front of the soldiers and everything and there's years of that and mm. so i think that he has that resentment and anger for not having that um, love from his dad mm. which the dad seems to be unaware of. He was so shocked because Commodus says this before he kills him. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah. And he's crying yeah. and he's, he's telling... He's like, basically, I would have done anything just for you to love me. Yeah. yeah. And he's talking about the values. He's like, you know, you have certain values, but I have these other values. And mm -hmm. some people... And he's like... And I think rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Values um, are different. Like, everybody has different ideas of uh, how to live life. Mm -hmm. And everybody has different capacities. And just because my values and your values are different doesn't make mine better than mm -hmm. yours or yours better than mine. I yeah. think every single yeah. I, value system or has its place. Not, not, not worthy of yeah. Yeah, and praise. And, exactly. But my values didn't make your list. Exactly. And, and it's just one of those things, again, we where a parent is dissatisfied with his own kids and then seeks a makeshift child mm -hmm. outside of the family someone he either can mold into what he wants or someone who already who who he 
deems to align with hope with his own personal views i don't know if a lot of families have can experience this where a parent doesn't really show love to you a lot but you see them showing a lot more love to people outside of the family apparently because they don't feel like the family members um, have that kind of connection with him but at the end of the day that will always breed resentment mm -hmm. in you you'll always feel that feeling of resentment to towards your dad because he's your dad at the end of the day and the hope is that your dad would accept you mm -hmm. as you are mm -hmm. and validate you even though you are different from him mm -hmm. a parent shouldn't make a kid feel invalidated or feel like just because I'm different from my dad because at the end of the day even though that their blood and it's your dad you're allowed to be different you're mm -hmm. a different human being and Marcus Aurelius does not do a good enough job of mm -hmm. making his children feel like they matter mm -hmm. as they are as yeah. different as they are and it's not necessarily just Commodus being spoiled or wanting more than you should need because yeah. his daughter also doesn't have a good relationship with exactly his father either. yeah because they're like because he says to her, let's pretend that yeah. I'm a good dad. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, let's yeah. let's pretend we have a great, loving, rela yeah, father-daughter relationship. This is nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe she, uh, you know, maybe isn't as desperate for it or just shows it in different ways. But, um, yeah. And I mean, that, she, I think she's not as desperate because she's a woman. Mm -hmm. And so in those in that time, a lot the expectation is that the, the, the son is, is the one who's going to take yeah. over. Yeah. And if there is no son, the queen or or mm -hmm. the empress is going to take over until her son yeah. is of the age yeah so with what with women in that in that case there isn't that much pressure so, yeah that's so, true yeah. yeah but there's more pressure on you if you're a man yeah and if your dad doesn't see you as good enough yeah. that is emasculating in a lot yeah. of ways him yeah. growing up knew that most likely he was next in line for the throne so there's an expectation from a young age yeah that he'd have to live up to his father which is already He's already created this massive legacy for himself. Exactly, um, which is a lot already on top. a lot yeah. already. And then if he's kind of an absent father, for maybe good reasons or bad, busy fighting yeah. wars and being the emperor and a philosopher and all that. And then maybe, you know, I, I think some of it was fictionalized, but I could also see that as much as a, a, a wise person Marcus Aurelius was, doesn't always mean you're a good parent. Exactly. He does acknowledge us, acknowledge that when he says, you know, let's pretend I'm a good dad. Mm -hmm. Because it's really interesting when you have a parent who looks at his kids and is like very unhappy or disappointed in how his kids turned out. Mm -hmm. And yet you're an absent father. Yeah. He's off fighting wars and yeah. trying to build Rome and create this insane empire. Yeah. And his kids are at home. They don't really interact with him. And even Lu uh, Lu Lucila, is that her name? Yeah. Or Lucille. Lucilla. <laughs> or Lucille. Lucilla. Lucilla. Something like that. Oh yeah, the dad was like, I wonder what you would be like mm. if you were a, if you had been my son, right? If instead of my daughter, right. and she's like, I would have been whatever you molded me mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. you know. And being an absent father, <laughs> you are molding your kids in a certain way, like. Mm -hmm in that way that a neglectful parent molds their kids, mm -hmm. right? And then also having these certain expectations let, like your kids are supposed to, to become, be you mm -hmm. by osmosis because really you aren't there. You're not actually channeling them yeah. in any kind of direction because you're out there fighting yeah. wars or working and doing whatever. Yeah, which is yeah. very confusing. It's confusing for any family with an absent parent, but even worse when you're the most powerful family in the world. And so the parent, the kids of course have this huge expectation to live up to their parents, but people, when they're not there, yeah then they're like, okay, it's confusing because there's so much expectation to be like, say, My their dad. father, but he's never there. So how do I learn how yeah, to be like that? Exactly. Very and confusing. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that is hard. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I feel like Commodus' resentment and anger is justified. Obviously, mm -hmm. killing is never good. Killing your dad will, will always be horrible mm -hmm. and also mess you up. It messes mm -hmm. him up. Mm -hmm. He's he's distraught by mm -hmm. it. Character motivations are all very understandable in that movie. It's one, for me, it's one of the most satisfying endings because revenge stories have that satisfaction that everyone has of, of, of wanting to live out at certain times that vigilante justice. But of course, that's a fantasy. It's not really realistic if everyone did that all the time. The world would be even more of a mess. But, you know, it's satisfying sometimes to kind of feel like I could take control of these things when forces have... The, their way with my life and I have no control over what happens to be able to actually say, no, I'm actually going to take yeah. control of the, uh, have some control over it. But yeah, as some revenge movies like to show, it's not a lasting feeling because at the end then you're like, oh, that's it. It's gone now. You know, yeah. so does revenge actually solve anything? But in this case, it was just enough to also free a lot of people, freeze himself, Maximus, freeze 
you know, uh, Rome. his Rome, Commodus' sister, who was afraid for her life every day. Yeah. Because, uh, and, and if you freeze Rome, freeze the people, freeze the army, freeze everybody. Everyone's yeah. free. Now we are free is the name of the song at the end of the movie. So, yeah. yeah. Freed also. That's another card that shows up. Freed that then causes the corruption in the Senate. The senators may become complacent. Freed. Business of death and gladiatorial yeah. fights. Yeah. You know? Even war. It talks about, it's like, out of what, 25 years or so, we had four years of peace. Yeah. What for? You know? Yeah, for Just keep expanding. Expanding. Yeah. You gotta keep expanding. And it's interesting because we see that still now mm -hmm. um, with countries, obviously, uh, because times have changed, mm -hmm. you they have to do it in a more tacit way mm -hmm. that um, will blind people to the actual reality. Mm -hmm. Because people aren't as who's going to war anymore mm -hmm. and so you have to find a way to justify it that will make that to make people feel like oh, okay then it's okay mm -hmm. i think one of the things that was really one of the things that i found to be really interesting i think was when uh, uh, commodus where the senators or uh, both the senators and 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 commodus talk about how you have to give people what they want mm -hmm. you know like if you want um people to love you there are just certain things that you you're going to give them that aren't actually good for them in the long term, mm. but they are the things that will blind them to the reality of what's happening in mm. their lives. Mm. For example, the gladiator games, he does that because people want to see death. People want to see, like they want it. Yeah, uh, entertainment, uh, action. Yeah. yeah. Distraction. And because they enjoy knowing stories. that they come from Rome and Rome is conquering um, all of these worlds. And, but they, uh, Commodus has this grand idea to bring it close to them for them to, to actually see mm -hmm. war just you know within reach mm -hmm. and and he does this even though he is using their grain reserves I think mm -hmm. knowing that after three years all of these people that are enjoying this thing right now are going to be starving out of their minds mm -hmm. and then obviously these people are then also blind to the the fact that Rome is is struggling financially, mm -hmm. politically, socially, mm -hmm. um, because they're enjoying this, you know, this this huge show. Mm -hmm. And so, when you think about it in modern day times, mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways that the government kind of or countries do that, mm -hmm. where they distract people from what's really going on, mm -hmm. and with something mm -hmm. like either it's something really fun mm -hmm. um, or something really bad, or something really bad to to, to take away yeah. from the other thing that mm -hmm. they didn't want people to keep focusing on. Yeah. I can think about it even with things like mainstream entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, if you really look at it, you can you can <laughs> if you really sit down and talk about it like philosophically, <laughs> you can look at mainstream mm -hmm. mainstream inter entertainment as a distraction because yeah. you're not watching as as much. Uh, news and even the news itself has become such a show mm -hmm. like if you watch news yeah. now versus news um like old and days news like when your parents were watching news it's such a different thing Back in it's the like old literal days. it's like literal entertainment now yeah. when you're watching the news or it's just like a, a boxing like, match yeah and so depending on which network you're watching are you watching bbc are you watching cnn are you watching al jazeera are you watching russia tv you know if you're depending on network you're on mm -hmm. the same story will be told from different angles mm -hmm. with a, with a, with a certain kind of bias mm -hmm. there's so much distraction mm -hmm. and you never really know what's true what and what is not and a lot of the times that is manufactured mm -hmm. and so that's what uh commodus does because his main view is for the people to love him he doesn't mm -hmm. actually have to do anything yeah. he's not actually helping the people out no. he's not doing the hard work because i think the reality of citizenry mm -hmm. is that if you, for a, 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 an entire country to actu actually prosper, there are lots of sacrifices that each individual person would mm -hmm. have to make. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it means like, you know, for example, taxing, right? Mm -hmm. That's an example of a sacrifice. You make money mm -hmm. and then the government takes um, the money that you earned mm -hmm. to distribute it to whatever social services that yeah. are needed. Yeah. That is an example, right, mm -hmm. of the sacrifices. But there are only, there's a, there's a limit as to what government can do because People don't want to do that. People mm -hmm. aren't willing to go the extra mile at the end of the day. Yeah. They aren't willing to let go of certain comforts. I can't remember. I think he even talks about just dissolving the Senate. So he figures, well, I'll get the people really on my side. And if I pull something like that, a lot of them, some of them might be a, 
oh wait, was he doing that, getting rid of the Senate completely while we were, all the games were going on? But a lot of people would be like, eh, whatever. Yeah, who wouldn't cares? Even, wouldn't even exactly. read about it. Wouldn't even notice it. They won't even notice and, it. And I mean, there's a reason why bread and games, the the phrase is still around for modern equivalences, equivalencies. You know, back then it was literally bread and games. They would just toss bread into the crowd, and there were games, pretty harsh games, but games, yeah. I suppose. And Games, they were gladiator fights, but there were also other things. There were chariot races, which could be seen as a game. There were, there were other kinds of things. They would fill up the, the arena with boats, and they would have, like, mock boat battles and such. Yeah. So there were games. So that's where you get the modern-day bread games. So, it, you know, it, it's a pretty similar situation from back then. Yeah. Always not much change. Things have gotten slightly more civil. Yeah. And also, at the end of the day, I think civility, like anything, is relative, mm-hmm. right? Because if you really look at it, I remember in one of the movies, I think it was a, it was Snowpiercer, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about, would you give up your smartphone if you knew that mm-hmm. it would save someone mm-hmm. um, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, mm-hmm. right? So now there won't be more potent to make your iPhone. Yeah. Would you do that, right? Mm-hmm. Because, like, is my using my having an iPhone and being able to do all of these things that I can do in the modern world, mm-hmm. is that civil? If I am aware mm-hmm. of the fact that it has such a detrimental impact on someone else's life, mm-hmm. is that civility? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, and that's that's where Commodus obviously was trying his best, spending all the, the, the food reserves and the financial reserves to distract people. But uh, to a degree, the people do it to themselves. They're willing to be distracted and have these illusions work on them. Because exactly, uh, there are plenty of people, I think, that know... How much their their modern comforts are a destruction to people on the other side of the world or the environment or what have you. But they kind of find ways to get around it. Yeah. Or be like, well, you know, I, I, I need it. It sucks, but I need it or something, you know? Yeah. You know, looking into the details mm-hmm. of how this entire system works yeah. and how mm-hmm. little sense it makes. Yeah. Because if you decided that if you went actually went further you would actually say, I'm just going to go and deal with the cause mm-hmm. and not treat mm-hmm. the symptom, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you know what there's I mean? a lot of treating the symptom. Yeah. There's a lot of absolving of people's consciousnesses, for sure. Or uh, Because, for instance, yeah, don't even do a charity. Uh, in some, some, sometimes might be uh, more effective then, but it has a similar effect, I think, to people's conscience to, say, giving a little bit of money to a homeless person, yeah. right? They Instead of really changing things around, which I understand as an individual, sometimes there's only so much you can do. However, it still feels like, ooh, I feel bad that there is such a difference in my situation to this person on the street. So here's a couple bucks, you know, not really doing anything. Yeah. I mean, sure, it's it's maybe getting them by a little easier that day. I'm not saying don't give money to homeless yeah. people. Just say, overall, it's not changing the conditions yeah. that are creating you being all right and them yeah. being on the street. Exactly. Same thing with the charity is... Like- Offering food to you yeah. know those ho- those are uh, like soup um, soup kitchens, soup kitchens. Right. yeah yeah like yeah. you're offering food to the soup kitchen mm-hmm. how come why don't you reflect on what yeah. is it that I can do so that there aren't any, there's a need yeah. at the end of the day for soup kitchens exactly yeah. so again I'm not saying don't it's donate to charity thing. or don't don't yeah, give to homeless people or to yeah soup kitchens or homeless shelters but again it's, it's treating the the, the the symptom rather than the cause yeah. so you donate to charity a lot of times. You're like, oh, I feel good because, you know, I'm sending yeah. some money to a poor village or something or to a war-torn situation. Yeah. But again, these things are still happening. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the kind of stuff that leadership as as well, like with Commodus, he taps into that when he's do- doing these games. He mm-hmm. taps into that knowing that people can j- will so easily just like rest in this mm-hmm. cloud that they create mm-hmm. of, of just completely ut- utopia yeah. everything is okay mm-hmm. you know like nothing is wrong with rome they we have gladiator games mm-hmm. there's bread we get bread we get to see people kill each other you know mm-hmm. and then you're just kind of completely blind to what your country is actually doing and mm-hmm. how it's killing people all over the world mm-hmm. to expand and also you're blind to the social dynamics in in your own like immediate environment mm-hmm. right because it's it's there's so many things that are happening in the background with the government Economy that people aren't aware of, and they're blind to this because of these games. Commodus does this on purpose, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that people are so willing to fall into that mm-hmm. comfort. Dealing with that reality is a damn difficult thing. It is, but it does take more conscious effort to not to to not allow yourself to to fall into that complacency and 
lack of responsibility and awareness. So yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, baby. oh you're pulling on your toe. I'm sorry. My hair is too close. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I think that's some, some really juicy stuff there. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. If you watched it, please uh, share your thoughts on our thoughts in yeah. the comments. Yeah. Till next time. That's a wrap. Bye.